Hey, so me and this dude have been best friends since we were kids. I'm Alan. I write graphic novels for a living. That's Victor. He does TV and film production. We're finally making a feature-length film together, and we're inviting you to join us. This is Making Our First Movie. Two young activists must choose between violence and peace to bring down the corrupt politician responsible for the death of their childhood friend. All right, so one of the things in this movie we're talking about... uh, how characters can use protests to fight injustice. And uh, two of the main characters, we have three main characters. Two of the main characters are uh, two guys who have a childhood friendship, very much like you and I, um, which you know I was able to draw from and kind of fill in it out. But one of the major differences is that one of these characters is white, one is black, and they're having to figure out how, who they are demographically affects how they protest, uh, which, you know, I think is something that most people have never really thought about. I hadn't thought about it before I encountered the idea. Right. And then we have uh, Emmy, who is the third main character, uh, and she sort of represents um, the future of the press and how news can be useful in bringing down injustice. Right, right. And I, I particularly, I like her um, only because when I know when we did the... Um, when I developed that character, I made her Afro Latino. I mean, she's still um, she's African. Afro, she's a black woman, but she's Afro Latino. And I, because because I'm first generation American, well, my family Panamanian um, is someone who I could relate to and kind of draw that out. Um, yeah. You know, it, it also shows that all black people aren't we're not a monolithic race. Um, right. I guess. I mean, when people see black, they're like, "Oh, you all, you guys is all the same." We, we come from very different backgrounds, but. The one thing that joins us all is the color of our skin, and the world did that to us. Yeah, I've seen enough movies with female characters. Their whole role is either to be the girlfriend yeah. or to win the love. Yeah, of, you know, we're not doing female that. characters. Yeah, we're not doing yeah. that. We're, make, we're making her strong. She, she's our, she's her own person, which is why I yeah, love. Yeah, she her has so her much. own agenda in the movie. Yeah. She has her own goals, uh, yeah. which you know, I think right. define her as a character. And uh, I'm happy with the way they, that they came out. Yeah, me too. Part of how, you know, this came together, we talked about this in a previous episode, but it was after I published my graphic novel, uh, The Burning Metronome, which you you backed on Kickstarter. You're yes, I did. One of my few <laughs> friends that I grew up with who, who backed me on it. <laughs> it's a great project, man. Like, I had to. I mean, I, how can I call you my friend if I don't back you financially? I put my money where, where my mouth is <laughs> when it comes to my yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciated it, man. And you said that when you read it, it kind of um, opened up some possibilities to you in terms of... Uh, how you and I might be able to work together on something. Right, right, and and that's what when, when I saw how you wrote it, I was like, this is a movie, um, and I mean, I, I, and it really had my mind wide open hmm. um, as far as how to do, you know, the straw man, um, because your your graphic novel touched on a lot of social issue, issues, racial issues, yeah. um, which I thought were brilliantly done and brilliantly written. <laughs> right you know? on, thank you. Right. I guess yeah, we should talk about that some. Uh, <laughs> So creating, like, self-publishing that graphic novel opened up all these sort of opportunities for me that I would not have predicted. Right. But, and one of them was that uh, a university here in Denver uh, invited me to teach in their master's program, uh, and I teach graphic novel writing. Which, which is dope. if you would have asked 10-year-old version of me if that was a possibility, <laughs> I would have laughed at you. Like, no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> But I mean, right. I mean, but it's, it's a testament to how, how solid, how good, how great of a writer you are, and mm-hmm. which is why when I read that graphic novel, I was like, "Yo, this is seriously dope." But I can see how that caught the university's attention. I mean, it makes sense um, because it was right. really, it was really, really well written, really well done, much like our script, which is why I wanted to work with you so <laughs> bad on on this movie. <laughs> but right on. but yeah, yeah. So in a in a future episode, we're going to talk a little bit about like what went into the plotting, but. Uh, I'm going to say we took a couple of months to plot it, and then when it's time for me to sit down and write the script, it was about five and a half months right. for me to get it uh, you know, tight, get a really strong first draft. Right. And during that time, you were racking up all these professional movie credits. Yeah, I was, during that, uh, I was, yeah, I was working like crazy. Like I, I think I was working on literally, at one point, I think I might have been working on maybe five movies at the same time they were all in different faith wow. different stages which is crazy folks look at me like how are you doing and working a full-time job right but um so basically i wasn't sleeping 
<laughs> but I was getting his uh, credits in. <laughs> right, right. I don't know if anybody's paying attention. We mentioned that you won Emmys, but if we look over your shoulder, we can see some of those awards oh, in yeah, the background. Right yeah, they're right there. Yeah. Yes, very subtly displayed. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Come into my into my sanctuary. You got to see all of what I've done here. <laughs> right, right. No, but seriously, but I mean, but yeah, I mean, it's years, decades of hard work. But um. I was working on literally back-to-back -back films, um, all these network films, and it, it threatened to almost take me away from finishing up this movie because I was so busy doing that. But thankfully to you, you kind of kept me on track <laughs> with that. I mean, politely. Oh, well, your wife, Poli your wife politely was kind of part of that too. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and Carrie did hop on board with that, and she kind of got on me about working with my friend finishing up this movie, which I was thankful She got for. on me about not getting on you. Me. <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> she, I remember. I do remember that. I was like, seriously, Carrie, that's what we're doing. <laughs> but it right. worked. Right on, man. So, uh, for somebody who is trying to strike that balance, right? Like, you know, you got caught up in all the other work you were doing uh, to realize other people's projects. Uh, what would you say to somebody who is trying to figure out, like, when is the time to go do my own thing? It's like you have to be able to unselfishly put yourself first yeah. at some point huh. because if you're always doing someone else's stuff and there's nothing wrong with that because I mentioned it before I'm, I'm plugged into some pretty dope teams but ultimately um, they're pushing their agenda for their career and that's okay but you need right. to realize you need to push your agenda for your career as well and you can I mean you can do it all I mean I did I mean I mean it was a period where like I said I literally didn't sleep I don't suggest doing that all the time <laughs> Because I did get sick really bad during that period. Like, it was bad. Like, I, I went down really hard during that period. But me doing my own project meant that much to me. So my thing is, how bad do you want it? Right. Yeah, it, you know, I mean, well, and when, when we talked about it, like when me and you talked about it, there was, um, you know, concerns about, like, am I ready to actually make this thing happen? Do I have the skills? Do I have the knowledge? That kind of stuff. Right. I remember um, that conversation, yeah. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, because because and as again, as creatives, and I think most creatives can 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 um, any creatives watching this can relate to this. We we tend to doubt ourselves a lot, um, not realizing that we've had kind of like the Wizard of Oz with Dorothy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you've had what you what you needed all along. You just didn't realize it until you went through that journey um, down a yellow brick road, and you realize, wait a second, I did have all of this all along. Um, and it wasn't right. until you pointed it out to me. You was like, "Yo, back up, son. Like, look, look, look at what you've done. Look at what you're mm -hmm. doing. What do you mean? You, you know, you, why are you doubting yourself?" So, okay, a lot of that it, it, overcoming fear is very inspiring. But of course, also, the T-shirt's inspiring. Check it. <laughs> this is a uh, <laughs> no, that, that Darth Vader. Vader. <laughs> he says, "Your lack of fashion disturbs me." <laughs> really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> How ironic is that? <laughs> In a t-shirt. I kid, I kid. And next week, me and Victor will give you tips for writing a great screenplay. They helped us, so they'll help you too.